go ahead and roll insight. Howdy folks, I'm Dabas Volt, and welcome to Rolling Insight, the Dungeons and Dragons series where I give you some insight on topics for the world's greatest role-playing game. Today we're talking about sandbox versus railroaded campaigns. Before we continue, let's go through the definitions for the uninitiated. Sandbox campaigns are campaigns where your characters start in a town with a quest board and maybe an overarching narrative or goal, but your DM allows you to explore freely in whichever direction you choose. They hand you a map and say, here's everything. Now pick a spot. They don't care if you ignore the quest board or the big narrative. Essentially, the DM gave you a world and only said, go. Railroading is the polar opposite. Railroading is, no, you can't explore that town over there. It's not part of the story. You need to go here because that's the location with the adjective noun of event or person name. Just go here. Why? Because I said so, you idiot. This is my game and you'll do what I want. <gasps> Idiot. Now, these are honestly stereotypes, if anything, and gross over-assumptions of the masses, but the majority fall somewhere in this spectrum. But this video is about exploring the different types of games, not the toxic or unimaginative extremes these stereotypes perpetuate. So, let's start with sandboxes. A sandbox D&D game is one where the players have full control of the direction of the campaign. While this is normally the case with campaigns, usually they have a direction the DM or Wizards of the Coast wrote that the players are meant to follow. Sandboxes have stories, but ones that aren't the center of the campaign. DMs for sandboxes leave the progression to the discretion of the players, telling players, whatever y'all want to do, I'm down for. These DMs have probably run campaigns before that had players tell them they were too overbearing by not allowing them to do unrelated or unrealistic things like find the god slaying sword necessary for overcoming the goddess of death to reunite Charvax the broken with his lost love Shavi Big Tit. So now they run games where the players can literally do whatever they want. They also might rely a bit too heavily on generators and AI to write encounters or dungeons which will make up 80% of the game. Essentially at worst turning D&D into one big roguelike. The main problem is that sandboxes get boring after a while, especially when there's no quests or personal goals the characters have. It gets to a point where the world becomes a video game you've 100%ed and there's no New Game Plus option. Railroading is that Charvax character running the game that got booted from or left. They have an exact narrative they want the party to follow with no room for improvisation. Essentially, they're doing a live reading of a book that no one asked them to write. If the party fails to follow the narrative or makes a decision against the wishes of the DM, they're quickly corrected on what they're supposed to do or say. These DMs also usually have a DM PC guiding the party who's essentially the Mary Sue of the campaign who never dies and is the bold hero of the world while the party is just the scraps they picked up. These are the DMs who will say no genuinely without any kind of workaround. They put up a massive wall of I'm in charge and completely block the path you want to take forward. Even though these may seem like DMs you don't want to take anything from, there are some diamonds in the rough. Sandbox DMs have to do a lot of improvising to make sure the sessions run smoothly, essentially rendering the world in real time relative to the player's movements. Railroad DMs can write amazing stories, but ones that should be novels rather than campaigns. The happy medium between the two is what DMs should shoot for, a narrative with room for interpretation and loose threads the party can tie up in whatever way they choose. This establishes goals and a story for your players to explore, but one they can go for at their own pace without you micromanaging or being indifferent to their decisions. This is where the underdog of DMing styles comes into play, the river. A river DM starts with the initial push of the characters starting in the world and grants them a path of least resistance, one that follows through with both in-game lore and the backstories of the player's characters, weaving them together to form a beautiful set of riverbeds that the player's actions leave behind. In this matter, you give the players the ability to determine the adventure with their actions and explore their characters, while also maintaining your sanity as a DM by not having to prep every single possible outcome. It's railroady, sure, but in a way that allows the players to have fun with their characters while also being immersed in your world. And that about sums it up. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the notification bell for updates. I post these every Monday, so be sure to tune back in for more videos. If you want to see something covered, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next time we roll insight. Have a good one.